on the distant land that holds the dark forest that we have all come to love and fear stands a strange circumstance that I have been wanting to explore for some time now. If you've played the forest at all, then you would have likely noticed the red man that steals your child away in the opening cutscene. Throughout your time exploring, you may have seen the red man on a distant hill or commonly near the yacht in the cove of the forest. Maybe you've gotten as far in the game as to cover yourself in red paint and after this noticed how far you can walk through cannibal populations of the peninsula unharmed. If you don the red paint, the cannibals of the peninsula will act in a passive way to you. They will back away in your presence, cower in fear. Some will even drop to their knees and begin to worship you, almost as if you were some kind of divine entity. But why is this? What is causing this strange shift in aggressiveness of extremely hostile cannibals of the forest? So we know that the red paint works. However, we're not sure why it works. What is it about painting yourself specifically red that brings the cannibals to such reverence? There is very little information about this effect and why it is the way it is. However, I think I might have an idea as to what it could be. Obviously, this is some kind of fear response, or at, le at the very least, uh, respect for the individual coloured in red. The only real way I see this coming about is by some unknown being or entity earning the level of fear and respect in the eyes of the cannibals that have made them all react to this way. Now this is no easy task. As our main protagonist Eric, despite the many numerous victories and slain enemies, that can be seen throughout the game as you progress, it never seems to scare the cannibals enough to leave him be. They remain ever relentless and ever hungry. So who could possibly instill this level of fear in the cannibals? Your first thought might wander to Dr. Matthew Cross. If you don't know about Dr. Cross and his importance to the peninsula, I suggest uh, checking out my video where I cover him and his family's history in detail. So Dr. Cross is a prominent scientist within the Sahara Therapeutics Company and has proven his skills at using the ancient artifacts at Site 1, as far as we've seen it, second to none. But why would the cannibals fear him for this? Well the only reason I can think of is due to his attack on the plane carrying our protagonist, which allowed him to venture out and capture our son. But this simply doesn't add up. There isn't enough supporting evidence for this to be true. The cannibals couldn't have possibly learned to fear Cross that much from just this single action. That was mostly unseen to them anyway. With the biggest plot hole in this theory being, why the hell would Cross just paint himself red all of a sudden if he had already instilled enough fear by bringing down the plane? Well that's simply because he learned the trick from somewhere else. He's benefiting from the doings of another, similar to how we do when we cover ourselves in the paint. So it's not Cross. But I think I have a decent idea of who it really is. Let me answer this question by asking another. Who created the mutants? Or more specifically, who created the artifacts that gave way to these horrific biological terrors? Little is known as it stands of the entities that created the ancient artifacts, seemingly left behind on the peninsula. However, I'm almost certain they are beings that the cannibals feared greatly and that they must appear as humanoid in a red coloration. Are they aliens? Are they a lost civilization of humans? Or something more sinister? Visitors from a dark dimension such as hell? Or are they Lovecraftian in design? Something along the lines of this has to be the only logical explanation, as while we don't know much of these beings that created the artifacts, we do learn a few things about them by how their dark technology works. The artifacts have seen to be able to cause mass destruction in the case of the EMP artifact, and another, the resurrection obelisk, grants life. However, in order to do so, an almost ritualistic sacrifice of another has to occur. But even after this, the life that is granted appears to be constantly besieged by a demon from within until the poor host can go on no longer, holding back the darkness growing in their bowels. The dark entity eventually takes over, and the life used to save another now goes down in vain as a beast is set free. 
Considering how evil this process seems, I think it's a real possibility that the ones that created these artifacts were of a red coloration and struck fear into the hearts of the human cannibalistic inhabitants of the peninsula. It is even possible then that sticking with our theory that the cannibals or previously the normal humans that populated the peninsula uh, when this uh, creator population existed were used in the nefarious demonic rituals to create mutants hundreds or possibly even thousands of years ago. The same mutants that are later encountered when the Christian missionaries arrived on the peninsula a couple hundred years ago before the events of the game and encountered the mutants for themselves. Perhaps this is how they learnt so much of what the red beings were capable of. Acts of sheer terror against their own tribes that have been passed down in stories from generation to generation throughout the cannibal tribes. So that if or when they ever encountered another one of these beings, they would ensure to show fear, respect and reverence to them in order to hopefully spare their soul from the tormented, twisted and dark instruments that are the artifacts and their creators. So whether they be monsters, creatures, aliens, demons or the devil himself, there is no doubt that they are to be feared and for good reason. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification if you never want to miss out on another upload from Project Archivist. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member through the join button on the channel homepage. There is also a link in the description. And with that, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.